I was just gonna so. wing you, Kev. No, just <laughs> don't don't be embarrassed. At, you know, <laughs> ask questions, right? Exactly. Let's see if you want in. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see you. if I can get in here. Snuggle. All Snuggle. right. <laughs> there we go. All right. Take it away, yeah. Fran. Hi everyone, Fran and Kevin with the Huga, and today we have Derek Lang with us, aka Deke, as he's known to most Deke. of his friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So do you want to go in a little bit there? Sure. Yeah. I, I've known Deke for a few years, and I know he's a big service guy. He's a help to a lot of other people. He's just been a fantastic inspiration for me while I've been getting sober for about four years now. Um, I don't know. We just, uh, I love Deke, he's, everybody that knows him, loves him, they're attracted to him because he's one of those people that just always gives back and they, people know that he's full of knowledge, so it's fantastic. I got a question for you, Deke. Yeah, <laughs> sure, right off the top. So, <laughs> you said you want to throw some humor in here, I want to see what your answer is to this. So you're looking at a, you're looking at a package you just took out of the fridge and it t there's a the directions on there and it says turn the oven to 375 what do you do turn the oven to 375 <laughs> i thought you were going to say turn it to 425 because we're not much for moderation <laughs> you and i right yeah that would be my first thing but, but cooking's become my passion so i oh, learned to follow true. those directions you follow directions when it comes to yeah, cooking i yeah, like it for yeah. sure i was like so i got weird. another one for you yeah right i know kevin's a, used to be a hunter <laughs> yes right Yep. So a doe comes out of the woods, yep. what does she say? Oh, jeez, I don't know. That's the last time I do that for two bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, That's, good. That's a good one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway, so yeah, we're going to hand over the floor to you, and you're yeah. going to take us away with it He's wherever you want, you want to like start. Yeah. <laughs> right on. So, uh, hi, friends. My name's Deke. I am an alcoholic and a drug addict and have recovered. Uh, from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. And all that means is I'm not cured, but I don't crave booze and drugs any longer. Uh, and the reason I do that, is, it, or got there, uh, was a whole lot of experience of trying and failing. And trying and failing and getting back up again. And uh, the 12 steps uh, I am involved with, uh, they actually changed the way I looked at my, my place in the world and uh and the world itself right because i i i just thought the world was doom and gloom and i was meant to you know have a, a real miserable existence and and that's what it was uh i was surviving at the end of it not uh not living and uh today i actually thrive oh, I so yeah. my experience is um i grew up in a small fishing community uh, about a thousand people um Dad worked hard and he partied hard, so I learned how to drink at a pretty early age. Mm -hmm. uh, our home was uh, full of love, but there was some dysfunction there for sure. Um, and, and that sort of set the tone for my spiritual malady, which I learned is what I had. Mm -hmm. I never ever felt like I fit in. I didn't feel, feel like I f fit in at home, right? Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't be a kid. I was trying to be the protector. And, and I have two younger siblings, and uh, God love them. I hope they don't watch this, but if they do, uh, you know, their experience may be different than mine just because of the way I felt and thought mm -hmm. about everything. Mm -hmm. But I felt like it was my job to protect them uh, and shield them from any uh, of the craziness that mm -hmm. was going on, right? Um, as a result of that, I became a caretaker. And like Kev said, a lot of people come to me because I'm still that caretaker. That's just part of my mm -hmm. personality, right? Mm -hmm. That's where it uh, from, it's, yeah. it, it's never going to go away, I don't believe. But the difference is today I'm not a people pleaser. So where before Kev may ask me to give him a hand to move on a, on a Saturday, and I would say yes, and then I would spend all week thinking, I really don't want to move that guy, mm -hmm. right? Like where would he be if I needed to move? But I would go move you and I'd be resentful at me, not you. Mm -hmm. So that's what the people pleasing thing comes into, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So now I've learned that no is a full answer, right? Doesn't need an explanation. No, no I'm right. not moving. Mm -hmm. I own a half ton truck and, and I'm in recovery and recovering people are pretty transient. Oh yeah. They like to call Deke and say, Hey, can you move this? Can you move that? You know, I gotta go here. And I learned I had to say no, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. To that sort of thing. Um, 
I couldn't wait to get away from home. And I joined the military as soon as I got out of high school. Right? Me and a buddy of mine went in, signed up. He chickened out at the last minute and uh, went on to drive dump truck or something like that uh, and started his family early. And I went into the military. And my career was short. Um, I got to see uh, Nova Scotia, British Columbia, and the East Coast uh, up from Boston up to Newfoundland, I, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in the Navy, and I had an accident on the ship. Uh, I had to self-rescue, and I went a little bit crazy after that. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, I'll describe what crazy looked like then. Was I was quick to anger. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't really sleeping, and at the time, there was no talk about post-traumatic stress, right? Because I was the new kid on the ship, I didn't tell anyone what happened. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get debriefed on what actually went on. I never talked about my feelings. Mm -hmm. And I was so afraid they would think I was a failure as a sailor mm -hmm. because of the accident. And I basically, you know, it was an accident. But had I been there for years or months and had some training, mm -hmm. it probably would not have happened. Mm -hmm. So the new kid at the job always seems to be the guy that gets hurt. That just happened to be me. Mm -hmm. And then I tried to hide it and, and what was going on through uh, drinking because it was accepted in the military. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a really big thing that happened to you, right? Like oh, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I uh, was supposed to sign on a new contract and three days before uh, I was due to sign that contract, I put in my release and, and three days later, the MPs were walking me to the gate and that was it. Oh. Career over. Oh, wow. So I went home a failure. <laughs> wow. And, uh, and really? I, I, yeah, like a, like a puppy with his tail between his legs, I crawled home and, and, and I didn't really speak about what had went on because I wasn't willing to look at it. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. Now there had been some other trauma in my life, uh, growing up and, you know, I've since learned that what I have is complex PTSD. So it's multiple traumas, mm -hmm. right? I didn't realize that through my addiction, I continued to put myself in positions where I was going to get hurt mm -hmm. and be re-traumatized, mm -hmm. right? Um, when I got into recovery, the PTSD sort of cleaned up, right? Things got better, mm -hmm. right? I started to do really well in recovery, uh, started a business, you know, I was overcoming some challenges. And that's what this is all about, is talking about how I've overcome those challenges, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I did it by leaning on, on other people that were recovering and trying to help where I could, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, with my business, I was able to hire other addicts and alcoholics that needed a second chance. And I felt that's what my higher power wanted me to do. And it was perfect, yeah. right? Yeah. It was like being at a meeting all day long, right? Oh, okay. yeah, you know? Yeah. And uh, it was pretty cool. We made some money. I made a living. I didn't make a fortune or anything. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, but it was pretty cool, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I became a builder, uh, so I, I built houses. Uh, but when I first started the business, I was willing to mow somebody's lawn, tear their deck apart, do whatever it took to make a living. Because when I went into recovery, I was on social assistance. The province of British Columbia actually paid for me to go to a treatment facility uh, because I was on social services. And, uh, and I was living with a bunch of guys in a house uh, that were not in recovery and weren't healthy to be around. Oh. Right? So at six months sober, I went into recovery. Part of that recovery program was I needed to be complete at my fifth step by the time I left, which is taking a personal inventory and then talking about it with somebody. And I did that with another older guy that come in and volunteered his time, mm -hmm. you know, much like I do today for other people. So uh, that was pretty cool. It was a life-changing experience. Um, I thought I had a split personality. Um, and they said, no, you're not split personality. We're going to show you who you are. And they did. Okay. And it was all 12 step based. Right. Okay. And that was Maple Ridge Treatment Center. Okay. Just outside of Vancouver. Oh, nice. Um, nice. So that being said, I was willing to do just about anything to make a living, get away from these other guys I was living with, uh, because I knew they were so unhealthy. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. I would stay in my room and lock myself in my room and I would journal and I would write crazy stuff down. And, and, uh, anyway. God willing, uh, some of them will, some of them came to the program. Uh, I don't know any of them that stayed. 
uh, which is unfortunate mm -hmm. because we know what happens to people that don't stick around, yeah. right? They yeah. usually end up back at it. So uh, that being said, you know, I moved on. Life got better. I was able to have relationships and, and you know, uh, things were going pretty good. Mm -hmm. And um, I fell in love, right, um, mm -hmm. with a man that we could not be in a relationship uh, for some reason. He wanted me when I didn't want him, and I wanted him when he didn't want me. And this went on for the better part of, I would say, 15, 20 years. Oh, right. Oh, that's yeah. A long time. So uh, I have a fear of commitment, I guess, is what my psychologist would say. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, that man ended up uh, losing his life trying to save somebody else's life. Oh, oh no. And that flipped my world upside down. I bet. Mm -hmm. uh, the relationship that I was in at the time um, ended because I just went into the depths of what PTSD looks like at its worst. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. So for about two months, I did not sleep because I couldn't sleep without having night terrors. Uh, I didn't want to sleep because I knew the night terrors would come. Um, that in itself was enough to drive anyone just about crazy, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. I isolated. Uh, I got away from believing in a higher power because if there was a God, why would this happen? I started blaming God, mm -hmm. right? Um, and uh, this is the, all while you recovered too, right? Yeah, you're, I was fifteen you're, years you're sober, sober at this, at this point. Time. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. But yeah. the guys that I had helped and the support system that I had built, like through sponsoring and and being sponsored. Those guys came to my aid, oh, right? Nice. They That's seen beautiful. that I was a mess. Yeah. Um, nice. I ended up in the hospital. I spent some time in the hospital. I'm the only guy I know that was sober 15 years, and they put me in a detox center. Right? Really? Now, yeah. the reason they did that was because they knew it was an environment that I would feel comfortable in. Uh, Had right. they put me in the Abbey Lane or the Nova Scotia Hospital, because of the amount of trauma that I'd already been through, they figured it would injure me worse. Mm. Right? So, anyway. Long story short, did a stent in the hospital. They got me on some medication. I got hooked up with some psychologists and psychiatrists and all that stuff, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, I started to talk about what went on, uh, which is the biggest part of healing. Mm, um, sure. And I was able to do it in a safe environment. Um, I had a young fella had come to live with me for a bit. He was a Viet, uh, not, I almost said Vietnam vet. <laughs> because there's another guy that I'm helping that is. Uh, but anyway, uh, an Afghan vet. Oh. And that young man changed my life. He openly talked about having PTSD and the, the trials and tribulations that go with that. Mm -hmm. And for anyone that's living with it, you know. I don't need to explain it. For anyone that is living with somebody that's living with it, you know. Uh, most of us spend about 12 years before we get help. Wow. Suffering in silence, mm -hmm. trying to talk ourselves into that we'll grow out of it, that it'll be different tomorrow. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, some of us don't, right? Yeah. And and they go a different route, and and that usually ends in tragedy, right? And mm -hmm. uh, and we've seen that in our province in the last couple of years, uh, yeah. definitely since the Afghan. Uh, the guys and gals that have come back from Afghanistan, um, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. Take a minute. There's, okay. There's been a lot of us that that didn't get the help they need, mm. and it's unfortunate. Mm. Um, yeah. But luckily enough, I did. I went to a program uh, called Veterans Transition Network. Mm -hmm. uh, put together by a group of people out of uh, UBC, a guy named Merv. Uh, it changed my life. The mm -hmm. night terrors went away. Wow. Really? I was able to talk about what went on with me mm -hmm. in a safe, controlled environment and get free of a lot of it. Wow. Right? That's now, that incredible. doesn't mean that I it mm -hmm. won't come back up again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but that program changed my life, and I became a volunteer. Well, good. Right? Good, good. So, mm -hmm. probably nine, ten years ago, I became a volunteer, and I've been helping out with them ever since. Yeah. Um, 
Every program I go on where I'm a peer support volunteer, which is just a guy that liaisons between the psychologist mm -hmm. and the, mm -hmm. the military folk, uh, either serving or retired, um, I get something out of it. Mm -hmm. And because of the amount of trauma that I've had in my life, there's very few stories that somebody can share that I can't be empathetic with. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. I, I, I often say this, and I would, probably wouldn't say it on... Uh, YouTube or Instagram, but Here we go. The, the healing happens through the snot and the tears, right? Yes. Like I sure, have to go sure. into the crap to find the gold, yeah. right? Ugly cry. And yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's it's not pretty, right? But it's healing, and and I've seen where I can make a difference, oh, right? Yeah. That's great. The same way I do with recovery, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because once I got my poop in a group and was able to stay sober, I went on to help other people. Yeah. Right, yeah. so I've done yeah. like gone into to uh, correctional facilities and put on meetings. I've gone to the hospital. Mm -hmm. I was involved with a program named Choices, uh, which works with young adults up to eighteen. Um, mm -hmm. Our government decided that they no longer wanted twelve step fellowships going in to to help these kids, and it was unfortunate. But that stopped uh, quite a while ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but every now and then, I hear somebody at a meeting say. Oh, my first introduction to this was at Choices, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Really? Right? Mm -hmm. uh, wow. I hold some service positions. Uh, I'm the hospital and institutions chair for one of the fellowships. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah. so I'm still involved in that, although COVID really put a damper on what we can do and how mm -hmm. we interact with mm -hmm. people and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I became a volunteer firefighter because as a kid, I was a little shit <laughs> in my community. Yeah. I did some damage to some stuff. You know, it might have been the odd road sign or bridge or something, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. um, and a way of making things right with my community was giving back. Mm -hmm. So I became a volunteer firefighter. Mm -hmm. And the post-traumatic stress actually made me better at what I did. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. My military right. history uh, taught me that the more I learned about firefighting, the more effective I could be. Right. Mm -hmm. The PTSD helped me with the situational awareness. So it's not a matter of just pulling up at a house fire and putting wet stuff on the hot stuff. Right. You need to know what's going on around you. Mm -hmm. And I was able to see that and uh, I accelerated really quickly at that. Good. But in that job, I too was traumatized. Right. You just mm -hmm. can't be a firefighter not, and not see not the stuff yeah. that you can't yeah. unsee. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. And I spoke about that with with other firefighters um, when I was first seeking help. You know, I was told, well, we've never heard this from another firefighter. Like, this is how long I've been living with PTSD. Right. Um, and I'm like, that's crap. I know guys that were down to um, New York after 9-11. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And when they came back, they're not the same. No. Right. We're, how we're, could you be? We're human, yeah. <laughs> right? And we're seeing stuff that we're not, it's not natural to see, mm -hmm. right? And we're dealing with the emotions that, you know, are overwhelming at times. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I want to talk about resiliency, right? Like through, through the programs I've taken uh, and my higher power, my belief in a higher power, and, and not everyone is on board with that. Now I'm cool with that. But I needed somebody to lean on. Right. Mm -hmm. And and my first sponsor said, you need something to stand between you and a drink because humans won't always be there. Right. Okay. Um, so I needed to get tapped in. And I, did, I went through the 12 steps, didn't believe it was going to work for me. Right. Yeah. And I got around step nine and, and making amends and, and cleaning up the past. Mm -hmm. And I felt worthy of my higher powers love. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So it's, it happened even though I didn't believe it was going to yeah. happen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that may be the case for some of our listeners. too. Mm. Right. So anyway, um, that being said, like my friends get mad at me because they'll text me or they'll phone and they'll say, what are you doing on the weekend? I said, I don't know. Right. Because I get up and I start my day off with some prayer and meditation mm -hmm. every day. Every day. And I listen yeah. to what my higher power wants me to do. Mm. Right. And because I am not working, uh, thanks to my injury, right? I have lots of time to volunteer mm -hmm. and the phone might ring and I may have to go to Cape Breton to help somebody. Mm -hmm. Or I may be involved in another program. 
somewhere, right? And I, and I volunteer for that stuff because that's my higher power talking to me. It's the way I look at it, right? Mm -hmm. And he's not steering me wrong, right? No. You know, I made a deal with him somewhere along the road, and I don't know where it was. I think it was before I even came back into the rooms after a relapse that he was going to remove the obsession to drink and use, and I was going to go on and help people. And mm -hmm. that's why Kev said I'm a helper. I, I, I try yeah, to put so myself good. out there and help people. Yeah. This last storm we had over the weekend, I, I burned wood. I brought people to my home and fed them and, and kept oh, them warm and, and did what I think a good community mm -hmm. person should do, a good that's human beautiful. being should yeah. do, right? Yeah. A good human. And, and yeah. I had <laughs> the opportunity to do that, mm. right? I got to be a dad to a couple kids oh, that are now full grown. Right, really? and really? Uh, and that's really cool. Yeah, right. Uh, because one of the the biggest things with being gay was I thought I was never going to have kids, and my higher power put the opportunity. Oh, right? that's so nice. And, uh, yeah, that is so nice. Yeah, it's yeah. it. They they are my anchor, right? Oh, they yeah. they truly are. Oh, um, that's so yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know, my my daughter uh, took a job helping another veteran living with PTSD. Because of li dealing with me and living with me, mm -hmm. yep. she had the experience to go on and to help somebody else. Love so, it. so even though I wasn't trying to pass that on to her, it's got passed on, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and and so many of the gifts boy. of the program have for me, right? Yeah. Now I like to have fun. Right? <laughs> Kevin, I talked about Kevin like likes to be a hunter or yeah. used to be a hunter. I'm a hunter, right? Yeah. I sit in a tree. September, October, and November. You guys need a treat. Right? Yeah. I take lots of photos of, of animals. Every now and then I get lucky and, and harvest one. Uh, I gave up rifle hunting. Uh, yeah. I'm a bow hunter. Right? Oh, Something yeah. new, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, it's a little more challenging, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, I got into wakeboarding. Yeah. Snowboarding. This year, yeah. Skimboarding, right? You got a couple kids. I mean, you're, this is all going to come your way, right? Yeah. And Kevin, if you need a, a snowboard, I got one in the basement. I'll sell you a brand new Burton board, right? Yeah. <laughs> my daughter's high into that, yeah. too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, sobriety's got to be about having fun, right? Yeah. Life yeah. should be about having fun. Oh, for because sure, if you're not right? busy living, you're busy dying. And I don't want to be busy dying, no. right? I did that in my addiction, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I swam with the sharks down at, off of Mexico. Oh, my Gee. God. Right? How was that? Oh, it was scary, but I loved it, right? Did you? Would yeah. you do it again? I would definitely do it again. Oh, awesome. And I swam with <laughs> sea turtles mm -hmm. and manta rays and stuff. Some of this was in aquariums or in netted in spots, right? And I know there's people out there that don't believe they should have done that. I'm so glad they did because I like to go out and adventure on my own. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I ran into sharks off on a reef all by myself, right? Did you really? And had I not had the experience inside yeah. that netted in area, I'd have probably been like, there'd have been a trail of stuff behind me. And wow. anyway, I might've even had a heart attack or something, but <laughs> yeah. anyway, talking about Mexico, yeah. God's yeah. used me there as well, right? Oh, yeah. Really? I had the opportunity to uh, take part in a rescue down there and save a young uh, Mexican kid from drowning. Oh, right? did you? Again, it comes down to my military training, Yeah. right? Firefighter training. Yeah. And I was in the right spot at the right time. You were meant and to be I there, knew what, though. I knew what to yeah, do. Yeah, you were meant to be there right? for him, though. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, with the guys I try to help in recovery and stuff, I'm not really trying to rescue them, right? What I'm trying to do is rescue me as a 17 or 18-year-old. And I only realized that a little while ago. That's one of the reasons wow. I put so much effort into helping other people. That's insightful. It's because like I'm that. really trying to save the kid inside of me that felt so helpless, yeah. so hopeless, mm. so that alone. Makes sense. Right? That's, yeah. um, that's actually very, very insightful. Yeah. Very beautiful, actually. Thanks. Yeah. Like, that is like, I, I think, yeah. See, that's what Have happens when you take some time to meditate right? and, and pray in the morning, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. I really, really appreciate that to find comment. That. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I quit smoking like that. I had, did a meditation that brought me down to my root chakra. Yeah. And I saw myself as a five, six, seven, eight, nine year old kid. And I needed to see something in that that allowed me to understand why it, that was a crutch that I was with. And I, it, I released it yeah. and I was able to quit smoking. That's awesome. 28 years. That's awesome. Smoking cigarettes. Just think of the money you've saved. Oh, yeah. Because I'm telling you, I'm still smoking. 
<laughs> and those bloody things are twenty one and twenty two dollars a pack. Right? Is that like right? that's that's more than my mortgage payment. That's right? a lot. Yeah. But, yeah. but uh, let's go back to the fun stuff. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had a sponsor. Okay. I still hang out with him. I love him to death. Uh, Freddie, he's sober, coming up on forty years. Yeah. And he, he and I went to Mexico, mm -hmm. and I took him cave diving. Okay. Right? <laughs> now, Freddie had so much fun. Uh, he's a big guy, right? He's got a huge heart. Yeah. And we were diving in these caves, and the fish were coming up, bumping on his mask, and uh, it was just amazing, right? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and, like, that's the kind of stuff I want to pass on to people, right? Yeah. Like... I spent a lot of time at home alone, especially during the COVID. Mm. Um, you know, I was able to build a little building. I call it my outdoor kitchen because I absolutely love cooking. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's got a wood stove in it, right? It, nice. It's made of scrap lumber that I salvage from places and scrap windows. But it's uh, yours though, right? But it's like a little cabin Perfect. <laughs> right next to my house. That's, that's right? nice, yeah. And uh, so anyway, that that's pretty cool to be able to go out there. Mm. And when COVID first started, that cabin was just a deck. And the reason I built it was so that we could get together and socialize and be legal about it. Mm -hmm. Stay the six feet apart, still have a cup of coffee, mm -hmm. still have the, the connection because my spirituality comes through through people, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The first guy I met that I could open up to about what went on in my life, mm -hmm. we're still friends. Oh, he's sober 34 years. He lives in Scotland. He's raising his family in Scotland. And that man absolutely saved my life by allowing me to be me. Oh, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's all I've ever wanted. To be you. To be me. Yeah. And to be part that's of. Huge. Feel like yeah. I fit. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I have purpose in life today. And, and part of it is helping other people. Right? Yeah. And I think a lot of people could re relate to that. Uh, oh, you I would, I mean? I would Everyone think so. wants to fit in. Yeah. Everyone wants to. You know? So yeah. I think that that's a huge statement, actually. We, we need it. We right? do. Desperately, yeah. right? We do. We, we are do. social creatures. We are. Right? Yeah. And uh, I've rambled on like a long time, right? <laughs> and but I know we were only supposed to go 20 minutes, <laughs> but I'd like to finish off my Didn't chat. Did like 20 minutes or like whatever with, the time is at all? No, yeah. like <laughs> with a couple paragraphs from, from this book that I read often, um, and you can tell by the pages falling oh, apart yes. that... I it's do well read loved. it often. It's well loved. Right? Uh, my little bookmark was made, <laughs> made by a child of, of one of the people that I've helped. Right? Nice. Um, just something they wanted me to have. Right? Yeah. And it it's meant amazing. so much I put it in my book. Oh, Aww. that's amazing. Right? Yeah. Uh, so anyway, on page 267 in this book, yeah. it says, and this sums me up to a T, and I may even cry while I'm reading it. And if I do, that's all right. That is that's all right. Because right. yeah. I said the healing happens that's through right. the snot and the tears, right? That's right. <laughs> so, where desertion, contempt, and pity were once shown me, I now enjoy the respect of many people. Where once I had casual acquaintances, all of whom were fair weather friends, I now have a host of friends who accept me for what I am. Over my 12-step years, I'll change that a little bit, I have made... Many real, honest, sincere friendships that I shall always cherish. Mm. Like the ones with you, Kev. Yeah. <laughs> I'm rated as a modestly successful man. My stock of material goods isn't great. But I have a fortune in friendship, courage, self-assurance, and an honest appraisal of my own abilities. Mm. Above all, I've gained the greatest thing accorded to any man. The love and understanding of a gracious God who has lifted me from an alcoholic scrap heap to a position of trust, where I've been here. See? It's all good. Keep Gets going. me every time. <laughs> where I've been able to reap the rich rewards that come from showing a little love for others and from serving them as I can. And nice. I can't think of a better way to sum it up. That, that is perfect. Fantastic. That's amazing. So thank you very much for thank having me you. out here. We are so honored to, so to have this you here and, yeah, and uh, share your story. And, and I, I wanted to say to your viewers, if anyone wants to talk personally to me, you can PM me, DM me, whatever they call it, <laughs> on, on the messenger. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and I'll be there if I can. If I can do anything to help, I will help. That's yeah. for sure. He right. will, and we yeah we love that you do you do that because there's 
We've had people reach out to one another. Like if something catches somebody out there, we can reach out to you. That's amazing. Thanks so much, Deke. You're welcome, yes. Kev. Yeah. And uh, we'll, and I, uh, we'll start. I'll give you a hug. Then. Yeah. <laughs> then, then and and <laughs> just, just before we close, I yeah. believe yeah. for anyone else that may be asked to do this, you know, if you speak from the heart, it's heard from the, it's heard with the heart. And, yeah. and that's really all I ask God to, to let me do. So yeah. um, I hope I touch somebody in a very positive way tonight. Absolutely. You're not thank alone. you all for being yeah. with us. And thank you. We appreciate everyone There's who is with us. There's a whole other life out there. If, yeah. you're, if you're struggling right now and you're thinking you want to get sober, you want to get off this and that. Sober AF. That. Yeah. Sober AF. <laughs> <laughs> thank See you all. all. Yeah.